What's up you guys? This is JT and I'm back with a tutorial video. This is a how-to video, Ashley. I know you guys uh, ask me different things. I'm going to show you how to repair a uh, um, cable line, coaxial cable, like cable television line in your home or outside your home. The process is the same. So let's get into this video and you can see how you can save yourself a little money on repairs and service calls. Let's go. All right, you guys, I'm going to show you how to repair a damaged coax slash cable line. Uh, you can do this for one that's outside or inside your home. It's basically the same process. So you've got your regular cable line here, you know, RG6 is what most uh, companies across, you know, the country and everything use, RG6 cable wire similar connector here and I got a little cables already cut. Let me show you all the items I actually have here. I got a bag of RG6 fittings here. Compression, compression fittings. Uh, perfect, perfect vision sells them, but you can find all different types anywhere. But just make sure, now key is, when you get a connector, make sure that you have the right compression tool that goes with your particular connector. I've got a compression tool here this is the one that goes with my particular, basically you can do RG6, you can do RG59. So it's an adjustable one. And basically what's gonna happen is when you put the, the compression on the cable, when you put the connector on the cable, it's gonna go up in there and, right, and this compresses the cable into the connector. So I'm gonna show you that. It's a little hard right there sometimes. So there's your key connectors. Your compression cable. Also, you're going to need some cutters. These are regular uh, Lyman's cable cutters. As you can see, this is the type I use. So you can see what type. It's just basically, just to cut any cable. So, say like you've got some cable wire like this. You know, it's easily just cut the cable wire off with these uh, cable cutters. So you got that. Next thing, I've got two different types. I got two different types of 716. You're going to need a 716 wrench because 716 is what fits on all of your connectors. So you can tighten them up. And you got the ratchet. You can you can do that too also. You know, you can ratchet it off. And also you've got a compression. Basically this is basically when you use this one, it gives you a little click as you turn it so you'll know because you're only supposed to give it one click so you can have the right compression. Actually, I think mine's is acting up here. Yeah, mine's is acting up a little bit. So I won't use this, but you can also use this so that you won't over tighten it. You use that when you get, you hit one little click, but then you stop. So I'm gonna put this on the side because it looks like I gotta, I gotta put that, that little thread back in there. Also, next thing is you're gonna need a cutter. Any stripper, we call it a cutter, a stripper, this is by Cable Prep, uh, cableprep.com. You can go there and uh, you can interchange these uh, blades. This is a RG6 blade right here, CPT6590, and use this to strip the cable, basically the way it works. Put the cable in there and then it's stripped. I'm gonna show you the whole process once I get through going through everything. So we got the 716, we got the stripper, we got the cutters here. It's what we call a burl splice. And this burl splice I'm going to use to once I cut the two ends of the connector, I'm going to be able to put them together so that, you know, you can uh, show you how to splice the wire back in. Because I'm going to give you an example as if the most common thing is like when a dog uh, chews, a dog or cat chews on your cable line and it's just like a little piece, a little area of it that's messed up. We're going to do that here. These are rubber boots. So if you're changing or cutting the wire on the outside after you finish, you can put these rubber boots on it and this keeps water out once you seal it. So I'm going to also show you how that works. So you can waterproof your outside fittings there. And this is a toner. So you use this to basically, I'm going to show you, you use this, here's another one too. You use this to basically determine where how many cuts are in your wire so if you see one cut you want to ensure that there's no other cut and basically i'm going to show you 
when you use this, you put one on one end of the connector, and then you go to the other end, and you want to hear that sound. If you, if you hear that, if you hear that sound, you know that your wire is good and it's not cut anymore. So I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna show you that. And this also just a little carrier bag. I used to carry all my tools in. I usually put that there. I put something like that there, and I put like the toner there. Carry all my things in the bag. Then you got the little clip here. You can clip. You know, you want to have a second one. You can clip that on. But let's get into the actual repair. Here's a little piece of a cable line I just got for you, just for this demonstration purposes only. As you can see, one has a connector on it already, and then another end is already cut. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to do an example for you. Let's say, for instance, I'm going to, uh, let's go halfway down. So let's say, for instance, this is your dog. Boom. Let's just say, let's say, this is your dog. This is probably what it looks like to you. Let's say your dog or your cat has chewed the wire up. Dog, cat, or mouse, or rat, or you know. So this is the wire. See how damaged it looks? So now it's damaged. So what you want to do, if you know, if you can obviously see where it's damaged, you take your uh, cutters, and I'm going to cut this in first because I don't want this to fall back. So you just cut outside of the damaged area. You come down outside the damaged area to a good area. Same thing, come down here. I'm going to cut here. So now, the damaged area is out. Now, basically, I'm just using a piece of cable, but this is going to simulate like one end is probably running from outside or running from another room or somewhere. And then one end, this would be like going to the TV or the cable box. So you're going to find the damaged area, cut it as so. Then what you're going to do, you're going to line this up as so. And when you line it up, you want to make sure that the cable comes all the way to the end of this, like so. And then you're going to turn that a couple of turns until you feel it get real loose like that. A little bit of pressure, and then you take that off. And your, your cut should look just like that. Got a little braiding, aluminum braiding on the line. That's for, to keep it strong. You want to turn that down because you don't want any of the braiding touching the copper. And you have a little bit left over. So you take a connector, slip it onto there, as so. And you want it to look just like that. So you see how the white area is flush? You never wanna you never wanna make a cut where it looks like that. That's what we call suck out in the business. You bring this down to its flush. Now once I do that, you're gonna take you're going to take your crimping tool. Now, like I say, this is how this one works. Take your crimping tool. Place it in like so. Voila. Now, it's crimped on there, just like so. Now, next thing you want to do is you're going to take your little burrow piece that you got. And you screw one end onto here. So, now, remember, we're simulating this is in place. I got this loose just for demonstrate, but let's simulate this is in place. So you've already cut out the damaged area here. You cut one end and you put your burrow splice on it. So let's just sit that here. Here's our other end. We're going to do the same thing. Let me make sure I'm staying a little organized for you guys. Same thing. We're going to turn that a couple of times. Get our cut. Bring the braiding down as so. And then we're going to take a connector. Put the connector on there. And make sure that it's flush as so. Take our compression tool, press it down, and now we have another end. So now you've seen me take out the bad area, splice two ends, put in the burrow connector, and now what you're gonna do, now this right here is for inside, inside repair. And there you go. And then right now you see you have two uh ends that are good. Let me actually, because uh, I never put an end on this one, so let me go ahead and put an end on this one, because I had originally cut this when I went to get the material, so I'm just going to put another one on this end, so that we can, like say, simulate as if this was a whole line in place. So now, 
What you have here is the whole line in place. So now you should be good to go. And what you're going to do to determine that, well, you can tell because if your TV is out, it's going to come right back. And that is how you repair a cable that's on the inside. It's the same process for repairing the cable on the outside. But on the outside, what you want to do is... It's the same thing as for repairing the cable on the outside, but on the outside, what you want to do is this splice is going to be outside in the weather, in the rain, snow. So when you put this burl piece on there for the outside, what you want to do is have little booties. You probably have to buy these separate, you know, little boot, they call boot covers. You, uh, you put one end on one end of the burl as so. Actually, this is, this is the big end. So you put that on there as so. And you put another one on that end. And then what you want to do is you screw that on. So you got your burl piece with the rubber. Then you take your next and then turn that as so. And like I say, what you want to do is you take your 716. You tighten that up. Because like I say, this will be on the run. So this will be in place. And then you come back over here and you tighten that up. Now, some people, like I say, have two, two of them because you on the burl splice, you want to make sure it's tight. So, I'm going to use the second one, and you do it like that. And you see I've got, oh, I actually turned it the wrong way. So, you actually, bam. Oh, you saw how that clicked? I'm going to show that to you again. Let me, I'm going to loosen it up. I'm going to show you how this works. Listen real closely, and you'll hear it click. And when you, when that, this is... And that way you know you got it. You don't want to over tighten it. And then now you have a perfectly good cable wire in there without having to go out and uh, call for a service call that's going to charge you maybe $50. And Because if it's just one little splice or two little splices, even if you got a cut here or a cut here, if you got enough slack on the cable, you just cut it out and then bring the wires together and then put your splice in. So now you're good to go. And, uh, you know, waterproof tight seal and it's always good to have these little connectors you know around you know you always want to have do a little handy work if you can because you know if you know how to do something yourself you're going to save a lot of money especially if you're moving or you know you have to change the room around you can change the room around you know yourself cut the wire reroute it and you can do all this yourself save a little money because you know they charge you for everything unless you get one of those protection plans you know so this is the guru. Just give you another how-to video on how to, you know, repair a damaged cable line in your home or out of your home. I got my hat on today. Hope you guys enjoyed this informational and tutorial video. I'm definitely uploading. I try, I'm going to try to upload on a more regular basis, but I can come at you with all types of things. Just make sure you like and subscribe so you can keep abreast. So whenever I post a video, hope you guys are enjoying the channel. Peace.